The MacBook Pro has just undergone a huge redesign both inside and out. It has the latest versions of Apple's M1 chip with either the M1 Pro or the M1 Max and it has an updated design as well. Beautifully squared off edges, it's slightly thicker and it's also got ports back. MagSafe, HDMI and most importantly for me, the SD card slot is back. Who'd have ever thought that a few years ago with a brand new Apple product? My chair is very squeaky today. I tried ever so hard to resist buying this, but I, I, I couldn't. As is very often the case with brand new technology, I gave in to the temptation and yeah, picked up the brand new 14 inch MacBook Pro. So that's what we're gonna have a look at in this video. Let's get into it. <laughs> So very quickly, just before we go any further, if you are new here to this channel, my name is Scott Edwards. I make all sorts of photography, video and tech related videos. So if they are the sorts of things you are interested in, consider clicking that little subscribe button that's just down below there and come and be a part of this community. Now let's have a look at the brand new 14 inch MacBook Pro. This is the base model, as I mentioned before. And in this video, I'm not, I'm not gonna go into all the benchmarks and specs and all of that because I'm not particularly interested in all of that. As impressive as the benchmarks are, I guess, I don't really understand them. So I'm just gonna look at it from my first impressions point of view and why this is pretty much the perfect laptop for what I get up to. If you wanna go and have a look at benchmarks and stuff like that, go and find another video because there are millions millions of videos all about that sort of stuff out there on YouTube. Now, as I mentioned, I tried really, really hard to resist buying this, but I gave in to the temptation. And that being said, I'm really not disappointed that I did because this is an unbelievable machine. It is so good. This is the baseline model 14 inch MacBook Pro. So it's got the M1 processor and 512 gigs of storage, I think with 16 gig of RAM. That's the only specs I'm gonna talk about. But this is the cheapest 14 inch MacBook Pro you can buy. And it is by far, by far, the most powerful computer I've ever used. And that's saying something because I switched to the M1 Mac Mini not so long ago, and that kept up with my 16 inch MacBook Pro, which was at the time the most powerful computer I've ever used. And now we've jumped to this. This is again the most powerful computer I've ever used. So Apple are doing some pretty special things with their computers at the moment. They are rewriting what is possible with computers. Now I could go on for hours about why I genuinely love this laptop and it fits in perfectly with everything I do. I know some people will have a few different reasons that they might not be so keen on this laptop, but for me personally, I can't find anything wrong with it for my use case. So what I've done is just picked out a few reasons as to why I think this is pretty much the perfect laptop. So let's start with the design of the product. And this is probably what splits opinion the most. I personally love the fact that it is slightly thicker because it just feels solid and sturdy. And this is something that you're gonna be carrying around with you, chucking in your camera bag and just taking around with you everywhere you go to work out on the go. And personally, I think this is perfect for that because you're not gonna be worrying about denting it or bending it because it just feels genuinely solid. I think it's probably one of the most solid Apple products I've ever used. And that's saying something because Apple makes some really reliable and solid products. But this, it just feels so sturdy. And I love that, especially because it is a pro device. I think it needs to just stand up to that everyday use a little bit more than some other devices. Some people might not be so keen on the fact that it is a little bit thicker because it does also weigh a little bit more than the previous MacBook Pros. But again, that just to me proves that it is a genuinely quality product and you could just carry it around with you everywhere. You don't have anything to worry about. I love the design of it. I love the flat edges around the top of it. Everything about the design I really like, even the notch. The notch has divided opinion quite a lot since this MacBook Pro was released. I'm personally not bothered about the notch because you just don't really notice it. It's something you get used to very, very quickly. And when you are using full screen apps or watching videos in full screen, it just disappears into the screen. So yeah, the notch is nothing to worry about. If that's something that stopped you buying this MacBook Pro, don't let it stop you buying this new MacBook Pro because 
it's not an issue. Now the display is another reason why I think this is the perfect laptop. So it has the liquid retina XDR display and this isn't going to come across very well on camera but it is so good. Probably the best display I've ever seen especially in a laptop. It is unbelievable. I'm not really going to be able to do a proper comparison on camera because I don't think it comes across very well. You need to look at it in person really to see the difference. But for example if I was to show you this screen and compare it to my external monitor it is on another level. The blacks are just so black whereas on a, something like this they look a bit more grey. I think it's got something like a million to one contrast ratio which is just insane. If you haven't seen this Liquid Retina XDR display in person, go and do it because I would do it on here but I'm not going to be able to, I don't think it really works over camera. Go and have a look at the display because it looks so good. I think though my favourite part about the display is the 120Hz ProMotion display. So if you don't know what this is, it basically means that the screen refreshes at 120Hz. I think the last MacBook Pro had a 60Hz refresh rate. But what that means is it just makes everything look so much more fluid. So when you're scrolling through pages of apps, everything just looks so smooth and it just makes it feel much quicker as well. Even though it's probably not much quicker when you're scrolling through apps, everything just looks smooth and it makes such a difference. And with it being ProMotion as well, it adapts so you're not always going to be using that 120 hertz refresh rate. So now for example, while it's not doing anything, it will lower that refresh rate and then when you start to do stuff, then it will move to 120 hertz. But again, it makes a huge difference and it just makes the laptop feel so snappy and quick to use. Now I'm not someone who usually gets interested in keyboards because to me a keyboard is a keyboard but I know Apple have had a lot of problems with people complaining about keyboards in the past. I think they had, I think it was called a butterfly keyboard which had really low travel on it and it didn't go down very well at all. However, this keyboard, I'm genuinely excited about it. I, I It makes me want to type on this computer and that sounds ridiculous because Coming from me, I, I'm not interested in keyboards, but this just feels so nice and even better, it sounds amazing as well, which might sound weird to hear, but it does. It's just got a really nice clicky, clacky, it's a pleasant sound. But this keyboard has changed the way I think about keyboards because it is so nice to use and I also love the way it looks. It's got these nice black surrounds around it as well. It looks so smart. Now if you've owned a MacBook or used a MacBook over the last maybe five or so years, you will have probably been living in something commonly known as dongle land. So for example, if you wanted to plug in an SD card slot or an external hard drive or an audio interface to record some audio, you will have had to buy a dongle to plug into the USB-C ports on your MacBook Pro or your MacBook Air, whichever Mac one you used. And that would then allow you to plug in your USB devices or your SD card slots, your external hard drives. Now, you don't because we have an SD card slot back which is absolutely incredible. I don't think it should ever have gone away. We've also got a HDMI port which is very useful and we have MagSafe as well which I didn't realise I missed so much. It is so handy. I love it. It does almost feel like a bit of a step backwards because you go back and look at the MacBook Pros from five, six years ago, they had loads of ports on there. USB ports, SD card slots, HDMI, Ethernet. I think it had an Ethernet port on it. I might be wrong. But anyway, you go back a few years and it had all of them ports and then Apple got rid of them to USB-C. And I, I think that was kind of a mistake, especially for something like an SD card slot, which is so commonly used among content creators when they're creating videos. For example, all my footage right now is being recorded onto an SD card slot. I don't wanna to have to carry a dongle around with me if I'm traveling somewhere so I can download my footage. I just wanna be able to plug my SD card straight in and start editing straight away. And now 
now you can. If you forget your dongle, it's not the end of the world now. It shouldn't have ever gone away. Now performance wise, as I mentioned, I'm not gonna go into benchmarks and all of that because A, I don't understand them and B, I don't really see the need because if a laptop does more than you need it to and it covers every use case for you, then that is a great laptop for you. You don't need to worry about what scores and benchmarks and everything it has just go straight over my head, but you don't need it. All you need to know is that this laptop is fast. And this is the baseline M1 Pro MacBook Pro. The cheapest MacBook Pro 14 inch you can buy is fast. There is no waiting around for things to load up. Apps open pretty much instantly. Final Cut runs absolutely flawlessly, no matter what you are doing in it. Editing big projects, it will scrub through the timeline so smoothly. You can play no matter where you are, just scrubbing through without any lag at all. It, is, it makes video editing an absolute dream. It makes me just want to video edit all the time. I know that is because Final Cut Pro is so well optimized for the M1, M1 Pro, M1 Max chips, so it is pretty much a given, but again, it is just incredible to use. I'm not so sure about Adobe Premiere Pro and DaVinci Resolve because I don't personally use them, but I have heard they run very, very well on these computers. I wouldn't be surprised if they're just as good as, probably not quite as quick as Final Cut because Final Cut is so well optimized, but you shouldn't have any problems at all with Premiere or DaVinci. DaVinci? You shouldn't have any problems with DaVinci, I don't think, at all. I've never heard the fans either. And that to me is just mind boggling. I fully expected to not hear the fans on the M1 Mac Mini because it has such good airflow, I guess, because it is a thicker device. My old MacBook Pro 16 inch, however, that sounded like it was gonna take off every time I even opened up Final Cut Pro. This, I think it's because it is slightly thicker, even though it's not as thick as I was expecting, because from what people were saying, they were saying it was very, very thick. I personally, as I mentioned, like that extra thickness. With the extra thickness, you get better airflow around the inside of the device. So that means more air can get in and cool it down. But again, the M1 is such, or M1 Pro in this case, is such an efficient chip. It doesn't produce that much heat and therefore it doesn't require that much cooling. I've been doing some heavy video editing on this and it, it gets warm, but I've never heard the fans once. Video editing and fan noise is not an issue at all. It's incredible. And finally, the battery. It's incredible. I've edited full 10, 15 minute 4K videos on one battery. I've probably used most of the battery in that use case because video editing is a pretty demanding task. However, to be able to do that on one charge of battery, that is mind blowing. I couldn't edit probably half an hour on my old MacBook Pro 16 inch without having to plug it in. It just drained the battery straight away. So this is just a massive step up in battery life. It's probably not gonna last as long as something like the M1 MacBook Air, but if you allow for the extra features like the liquid retina XDR display, to be able to, yeah, you know what I mean? It's just mind blowing what you can do on this thing. If you're not video editing and you're just doing light work, like word processing, or making a PowerPoint or watching videos, it's just gonna last all day easily. So battery life, big thumbs up. Now a lot of people will ask whether they should go for the M1 Pro chip or upgrade to the M1 Max chip. And my personal opinion is for the majority of use cases and the majority of people, the M1 Pro is plenty powerful enough. You, will, you can get so much out of this device and I don't think I've even pushed it. Even though I've been doing heavy video editing, it's just coped so well with everything. I could probably push it a lot more than I already have done. So if you're editing YouTube videos in 4K footage and doing a lot of photography, the M1 Pro 
it's gonna suit you just fine. Where I would suggest upgrading to the M1 Max chip is if you are doing 8K video editing, but let's be honest, not that many people are editing 8K footage at the moment. Or if you're doing a lot of 3D rendering graphics, I would probably recommend the M1 Max chip over the M1 Pro. But yeah, majority of people, the M1 Pro is just gonna, it's gonna be absolutely fine and it's gonna last you a very very long time because these are some serious computers genuinely impressive so yeah the MacBook Pro 14 inch I love it and I'm gonna keep this for a very very long time I think I finally found the computer that suits my use cases perfectly and it's gonna last a very long time I don't plan on upgrading this for a few years at least a few years, if not longer. So that is it for this video. I hope it helped out. If you are looking at buying a new MacBook Pro with a 14 inch or 16 inch, they are incredible. I would definitely, definitely recommend it. And yeah, if you like what you see on this channel, don't forget to click that little subscribe button just down below there and come and be a part of this community and give this video a thumbs up as well. And I shall see you all very soon in another video. If you are new here to this channel, my name is Scott Elders. So very quickly, just before we go any further, if you're new here to this channel, my name is Scott Edwards. I make all sorts of YouTube, YouTube videos. Of course I make YouTube videos. This is what I'm doing now. You've just watched it.